Okay, I want to take a few minutes and just go through some of the options that you can use when you make a graph. In this, in this particular case, I'm going to do it in the context of a box plot. Okay, so first of all, let's, I've got a bunch of stuff up in here, but let's just look at what it would look like if all we had was box plot score tilde review. These are exam scores by whether or not someone has attended a review session. And there's just your basic box plot. So let's take the next statement here. And this time, I'm going to put the parenthesis a little bit or a little bit later. I'm going to add frame plot equals false. That's just going to take this frame around there. It's um, well, I don't like to have it there, so I always take it off. So then the next thing, moving the parenthesis down here and just highlighting that part. Box wex controls the width of the box. And I'd like to have those a little bit narrower. One would be just what they are right now. But I'm going to run that down to 0.4. And you can see they're a little narrower. And you can decide whether or not you like what look you like. I like that a little bit better. And then the next thing I'm going to do is add some color. And in this case, I'm going to do color equal combine, open parenthesis. I'm going to, in quotes, put royal blue 2. So the first plot over here is going to turn royal blue too. And then comma, and then inside quotation marks light green, and that will be for the second plot over here. And just rerun. And that's what that looks like. Then I think I'll do these next three together here. We have main, which is the main title, is going to equal in inside quotations, performance by whether or not had the review session. Then I'm going to put a label on the y-axis, attended the review session, randomly assigned. This, as this was part of an experiment, people were randomly assigned to either go to a review, review session or not. And then, um, I'm making these up, but that's, if it were a good experiment, that's what you would do. And then the x, x la label will be score. And so you can see now I have a main title, a label for the x-axis, and a label for the y-axis. This horizontal equal true will turn the hypotheses, well, horizontal, 90 degrees over, there they go. And you can decide again whether or not you like the look of that better or not. I, in this case, I kind of do. And then uh, notice that the no and the yes are printed uh, sideways. I'd like to have them go over this way. That's what this next thing that LS, LAS equal 1 will uh, do. And just watch the yes and the no. And there you go. And then uh, that Y lim is equal to C equals 0 to 110. Now it looks like the X over here, and it just kind of seems a little, um, I'm not sure why they do this. When they do the limb, they do it on the default graph. So remember the scores were on the uh, uh, Y axis. So I'm telling it that I want the limits of that axis to start at 0, because we didn't start at 0. We started at 20, and I want them to go up to 110. I just picked a number that was slightly higher there. And now you can see the effect of all of that. And that's just a few of the options you can, that you can use. I'll put some others on some other graphs here. Uh, one that wouldn't make any sense in this one is called bear width. If bear width were true, you could get different widths for the uh, uh, two box plots where it's not an exact proportion, but if you did where bear width equal true and one had a lot more observations in the other one, then the width of the uh, box would be higher. One that you might be interested in I'll just go ahead and put it in here, is, uh, can't remember if it's notch or notches, but we'll find out. But what this will do, we'll find out in a second here, if I got it or not, will 
put a 95% confidence interval to the median. It'll put notches in the uh, box plots. Let's see if it does it. Okay. That might just be notch. Let's try that. Would have expected a better error message than that. There we go. So now we have notches, and this goes from the lower to the upper limit for a 95% interval for the, uh, the median. Okay, the next thing I have down here is I'm going to add, add some line segments uh, to the plot. Now, I've already done the plot, but you can add things like text and lines and segments uh, right here. For example, if I wanted to have a line that at 25, I can just put here A, B line, let's see, I think it's V equal to 25. We'll find out if I'm right or not on that. And there it is. So I'm going to, I don't want that right now, but I could just put a A, B line, V means to go in this orientation, and then I could do one the other way as well if I wanted to. But what I really want is I want to have a line segment. Let me go ahead and rerun this here to get that off. I want to have a line segment um, to designate where outliers and extreme values are, and I want a separate one for each uh, plot here. So the first thing is uh, down in the bottom here, I computed uh, for yes and no, yet yes and no being whether or not they took the review, cutoffs for outliers and extreme values. I started with to apply score review summary, and you can see now I have the five number summary for those that said no and then those that said yes. So uh, let's just look at the no to get the outlier. And I'm on the lower hand side, there aren't any outliers or extreme values on the upper hand side. So I went from, and I'm just reading this off of here. You can program this, but I'm just going to do it here for this data set. Um, I'm going to take the Q1 value, which is 62.5. I'm just reading that right up here. Minus 1.5 times the width of the box, which is the third quartile. That should have been a 1 right there. I think I changed that earlier. Uh, 81 minus 62.5. Multiply that by one and a half, and you get 34.75. And so you can see in my first where it says segments, I go from 34.75.9. That means I go, I'm going to go over to 34.75. That's x, y. Y is 0.9. Now I happen to know that the way they do the box plots, the first one is, to, is the middle of that is height 1. In the middle of the next one is height 2. They had four boxes over here. Then the first one would be 1, the second one 2, the second one 3, the second one 4. So I'm going to go just my, uh, my 34.979. So I'm going to come somewhere around here. And then I'm going to be just below the 1. And then my next is going to go to the same value of x but I'm going to go up to 1.1, just above the, uh, uh, the line. And so I'm just going to run that. And you can see there we have it a little. I've made it gray, and LTY just makes it dashed there. So there's a little gray line. Anything beyond that is going to be an outlier. And then for no extreme values, I did the 62.5 minus three times that difference between 81 and 62.5. That was seven. So now back up to my segments. I'm going to go from seven, just a little below one, to seven, a little above one. And now I've got a line there. So if there were anything beyond there, that would be designated as an extreme value. So the next things here, and I, you can just, I guess, look at those yourself. It's still Q1, but it's now it's for the yes group minus 
one and a half or three times the Q3 for that group minus the Q1 for that group. And so I get the numbers 41.125 and 13. And so you can see now my segments here are going to be similar to the other ones, uh, except for, so I will start with the uh, extreme value, the 13. I'm going to go down to uh, 13. I'm going to start at not um, 0.9, but 1.9, because I'm just, this, the center of this one is 2. So I'm going to go from 13, 1.9 to an x of 13, because we're in the same x level, uh, uh, 2.1, so just above that. So here, I'll do it for that one. And then the same thing for the outlier, except for the cutoff for that is 41.125. And so we'll put that one in there. And also, if you wanted to, you can add text in here. But to me, it's kind of about as busy as I want it right now. I like having those little reference lines in there. And if there weren't a lot of other stuff in here, I might add something in there. But it's getting about as busy as I want it to. But I could do text. Now I'm going to add some text in somewhere. And let's say I want to add it at about x is 30. And y, let's make it, see, we're at 1, 2, let's make it 2.2. I'll put it right up here. This probably really isn't where I would put it, but just so you can see where I'm at. And in parentheses, I'm going to put the word outlier. And I don't want that to come out very heavy, so I'm going to put that in gray as well. And that should put us and does the word outlier at, this is actually that um, 30 is going to be the middle of the word outlier, not the beginning of it, so you can take that into account. But if you don't like where it's at, if I wanted it to be a little higher or lower, then I just go change where, uh, change the numbers that I have there. If I want it to go down to 1.8, you can just see there's where it is. Now, left the other one in there. If you want to get rid of that, you have to rerun the old code there. And I've got some more stuff in there. And now it'll just be below. Anyway, there's just some ways you can embellish your box plot, add some text and line segments and colors and a whole host of other things.